Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to batch process images using GIMP. So to do this make sure you have GIMP software installed first. If you don't have that installed I'll put a link in the YouTube description on how to install this software. So once you've got the software installed you need to go to Google and you need to type in BIMP B -I -M -P, plugin for GIMP. So BIMP plugin for GIMP and we'll have this link here. We'll click on it. I'll put a link in the uh, YouTube description this link as well so you can access the software we'll click installer for Windows we'll click that and download it and then we'll click on the download file and we'll follow the on-screen instructions to install the software and that's it. it's pretty small software application and then you need to go to file batch image manipulation that's where we need to go to when we load up GIMP so we'll close this we can close this here and on my desktop I've got this folder inside this folder I've got this other folder called large image files so if I right click on it and check the properties you'll see that it's 53.8 megabytes so it's quite a large uh, set of images in terms of file size they're not huge but they are quite large we can have a quick look at them <coughs> and let's say that I want to email all of these images to my developer or to one of my clients I just want to drag and drop them in an email. 53 megabytes so is way too large for me to drag and drop them. So we want to reduce the file size, but try and maintain the quality of the image. So we'll close this and we'll open up GIMP software. And we're going to batch process those images. So we've got GIMP open. We'll go to File, Batch Image Manipulation. And we'll click Add Images here. And we want to add a folder because we've got multiple images, not a single image. We want to add a folder. If you've only got one image, then you can click here. But I'm going to click Add Folder. And I'll go to my desktop and I'll go to this folder and I'll go into this subfolder here where all the images are located. And I'll click Add. And then they'll all be added down here. Now we need to decide where we're going to save the files. So I'll click here and I'll go back to this folder but this time in this directory I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this smaller I'll call this small uh, file images and we'll go into that directory so we're going to save our files here the ones that we batch process we'll click OK so now that's been set um, a few of these options I'm not sure about but I'm just going to leave these as they are turned off you can experiment with this or read up on the documentation exactly what these things are doing but keep uh, folder hierarchy I'm not quite sure what these are but do go back to that website you can check these exact settings what they are because there's quite a lot of tools in here so we'll click add and when we click add we can resize we can crop we can do loads of different things here but in this basic example I'm going to click on this resize I'm going to resize the images to reduce the file size so I'll click resize <coughs> And in here I've got a few different options and it's saying allow stretching. We don't want to allow stretching, we want to preserve the aspect ratio and we want to reduce the size uh, from 100%. This is not width, right? These are widths and heights but they are percentage values. So let's reduce them to around 30% of the original file size. And when you type 30 in here, it will automatically put 30 in here. Um, here, this is like the type of uh, resizing I believe here. So I'm going to leave it as a default cubic, just leave it here and the resolutions I'm going to leave at 72, the, the original DPI resolution. And we'll click OK and we'll click Apply. Now you can add other, um, other um, manipulations to this same process. You could click Add and you could click a watermark or you could blur and sharpen and color change. You could do loads of different things in here. The idea is that you've got lots of images and you want to manipulate them all in one go without having to drag and drop them into GIMP, resize it, take it out and put another one in and just keep repeating that same process. So we use this and this basic example, we're just going to resize it like what we just showed here. So we'll click apply and this bar will increase uh, as it's gone through each image and it's doing this in the background. This won't take long at all. We just let it finish. Okay, it's all done. It says end. All files have been processed with zero errors, which is a good thing. And we'll click close here and we'll close down GIMP. 
So let's see what happened. When we open up this folder, remember I created this other folder inside of here. And if I right click on this folder now and check its properties and compare it with the large folder, right click properties, we can now see that the images, all of the images are now 7.7 .7 megabytes rather than the original 58.3. So now I can take all of those images, drag and drop them into an email, upload them to my Google Drive. It will be a much quicker process. Although the image files are smaller, the quality should still really be there. Um, but if you're going to do any sort of like printing, if you're actually going to be printing, then you want to really maintain those high resolution files. But in this example, we can imagine we're going to email them to someone to check them or we want to upload them to a website where they don't need to be such high resolution. So if I close this, let's compare a couple of images. So we'll open up this large folder and we'll open up this particular image, this one here, and we'll put it on the right hand side here. And then we'll go back a directory and we'll go to the smaller and we'll open up the same image, but the smaller version, the compressed version. So we can see them side by side and you can see the quality is pretty much good on both of them, right? They look fairly similar. The main difference is when you zoom in, let's say if we were to zoom in on this tower, uh, as we zoom in on this one on this side, you'll see uh, it's going to maintain, it's going to just have a you can see it's like the starting to pixelate and blur a little bit, but this one's still quite sharp. But this was the high resolution version and this is the compressed version. But if you were to just send this to someone and they looked at the image like this, they're not really going to be able to tell the difference because you're looking at it at a certain file size. Even if you zoom in a bit, it will still be good. And this will be perfectly fine to upload to a website page or something like this if you want to showcase that picture. So if we look at the file sizes between them, on this side we'll have our uh, smaller file size and on this side let's open up the larger one and if we go to details on both of them we can see 377 kilobytes and this one was 1 1.7 this is 771 kilobytes so they're all less than one megabyte and this one was five megabytes so that's a big difference this is five meg and this one here is 700 kilobytes less than five megabytes but side by side at this file size or this screen, uh, this resolution here that we're viewing, they look pretty much the same. Okay, so that's how you go about batch processing images using GIMP and that particular plugin. You can't do this without installing that plugin. So I'll put a link to that plugin in the YouTube description and how to install GIMP. I'll put a link to that as well in the YouTube description. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.